We're just going to talk about a handful of Chinese herbs I want everyone to know about, and then we'll go to Q&A. And Chinese herbal medicine is both comes from a long tradition, thousands of years tradition, and then we have modern Chinese herbal medicine that's based on science. So, oops. So Chinese herbs really um, are important in cancer care. In modern China, there's an enormous amount of research on herbs. And then there's the traditional energetic use of herbs. So in the modern sense, what we're thinking about herbal medicine is how do plant chemicals, phytochemicals actually change gene expression? How can we turn on uh, tumor suppressor genes and turn off tumor growth genes. And so plant medicine is very powerful at doing that. And inside of Chinese medicine, we have really powerful modulators of immunity. And these are in the category of tonic or imperial herbs, which are kind of food-like. You can take them every day as the way you would eat nourishing food. And so there's a tradition of that in Chinese medicine. And so the immune modulators fall into this category of tonics. And then there are a lot of herbs which actually change cancer cell, cancer cell metabolism, will change your cancer terrain, the environment that's hosting the cells. And then one of the big risk factors for cancer patients, about 40% of cancer patients will develop a blood clot and the, the physiology of cancer causes you to make more blood clots. And so uh, making patients safer, taking them away from that risk. So those are the three things I wanna talk about right now, now, just a handful of herbs. So what we're trying to do is both fight the cancer, but nourish the patient. And the fight the cancer is just a, a part of what, what is needed. And that's where modern oncology focuses, but there's no health model. There's no nourishment for the patient or helping you to heal or be strong in the face of your treatments. And so the, the use of herbs, the use of diet, the use of acupuncture, all the things that we do are creating an environment, a biosystem that will be inhibiting and not a happy host for the development, growth, and progression of cancer. And so that's our, our, our intent. So what we want to do is alter the cancer terrain and create a body where cancer cannot thrive. And that's our intent. So let's just look at a handful of herbs and then we'll go to Q&A. So there are uh, many herbs and, that are rich in polysaccharides, which are these complex signaling plant chemicals that turn on immunity and modulate immune function. And the great Chinese medicinal mushrooms fall in this category. I'll talk about two of them. And then I'll talk about astragalus, which is one of the most widely used herbs in cancer and immune care in Chinese medicine. So immune modulation by polysaccharides and a um, sister molecule called beta-glucans, all mushrooms are filled with polysaccharides and beta-glucans even uh, food mushrooms. And so you're getting uh, an enhanced signal to mediate immune responses, turn on immune intelligence. And so we talk about mushrooms as uh, biological response modifiers, making your immune system more smart. There's an activation of immune cells. And also there are inducers of cytokines, which are signaling molecules that will change gene expression and change how the immune system responds. Many cytokines are also inflammatory and they tend to be ramped up by cancer physiology and cancer treatments. So not only do polysaccharides and beta-glucans and the herbs that contain them, mushrooms and astragalus, which we'll talk about momentarily, um, they are both anti-inflammatory and immune stimulating. So you get an incredible balance to the immune system by using things like this. So cordyceps is one of the most important Chinese mushrooms. And it's shaped this way because it grows on top of caterpillars. <laughs> That's why it's shaped like that. And so um, you will find that all of the medicinal mushrooms, including cordyceps, 
will decrease inflammation, these specific inflammatory markers, COX-2 and F-kappa B and TNF-alpha, they're core to cancer physiology. And then we get this upregulation of natural killer cells, NK cells. And these are the cells of your immune system that go after bacteria, virus, and tumor cells. So we want to ramp that up. Acupuncture also ramps up your natural killer cells. We want to inhibit angiogenesis. This is the capacity of cancer cells to make its own blood supply and then grow exponentially. And so by inhibiting angiogenesis, by inhibiting the cancer cell's ability to bring capillaries and blood flow to itself, we decrease the proliferation and the growth and the spread and metastasis of cancer. And then uh, pro-apoptosis. Apoptosis is the intelligence in the cell that will tell it to commit suicide, to self-destruct. And cancer cells lose that attention, that, that function. And so it's very important to try and turn that back on. And if you turn it back on the intelligence of a cell to know it's aberrant and abnormal, that it should destroy itself, then you will have cancer cells doing that too. And so uh, the mushrooms will help to do that. And then these, these upregulation in BACs and BSL, BCL2, those are genes inside the cell that regulate whether or not the cell grows or, or destructs itself. And so we want cancer cells not to grow, we want them to self-destruct. And so there's normal physiology we want to turn back on that's turned off in a cancer cell. And then uh, the medicinal mushrooms, including cordyceps, also have powerful antioxidant functions. Ganoderma is probably the most well-known Chinese mushroom. This is reishi mushroom. And uh, it's important to get really good quality mushroom products. You want to make sure that you're getting mushroom products that have the fruiting body as well as the mycelia and that they are um, water extracted. That's how you get the most active healing principles in mushroom supplements. And the, the Ganoderma, the reishi mushroom, has you know, been called the mushroom of immortality, falls into the category not of, only of immune stimulants, but also adaptogens, which means it will balance our response to stress. And um, certainly cancer, cancer treatments are incredibly stressful. And so again, we have this anti-inflammatory function. Uh, interestingly, uh, Ganoderma has also got some antiviral activity. Uh, also active against the herpes family of viruses as well. Uh, it, as we said, with the cordyceps, it's immune modulating, immune activating, but also the mushrooms have anti-cancer activity in a multiplicity of ways, inhibiting vascular endothelial growth factor, that's the angiogenic factor, building capillaries and blood supply, transforming growth factor. Beta-1 is a growth signal to cancer cells. It's an inflammatory signal also. And then we also have this pro-apoptosis, the ability of the cell to recognize that it should self-destruct and a number of other pathways that cause cancer cells to uh, self-destruct and not keep growing. And then all of the medicinal mushrooms are potent antioxidants ramping up the natural in antioxidants inside the cell, the most well-known being glutathione. So um, you can get really high quality mushrooms. And uh, I think uh, reishi is probably the easiest to get from most herb companies in a very high quality. Now, Ganoderma also protects the liver, very important. It also enhances some chemotherapy agents. It also enhances the effect of radiotherapy. And it also protects the kidney and the liver from toxicity. And it also helps to balance blood sugar. So um, this is a really extraordinary gift from nature to have something perform all these functions. You can take the Chinese mushrooms concurrently with almost all cancer therapy treatments. It doesn't have uh, drug interactions. The only caution with these immune stimulants is if you have a history of autoimmune disease, you have to be very careful when you use immune stimulants. You could make your autoimmune disease worse. And also if you are receiving immunotherapy, 
then you need to consult a professional whether or not you should take an immune stimulant during immunotherapy treatment. If you um, have really compromised immunity and you take an immune stimulant like a Chinese mushroom, you will get a better effect from the immunotherapy. But if you tend to be uh, uh, inflammatory or you're already very inflamed or you have autoimmune disease, taking these uh, immune stimulants during immunotherapy might make the side effects worse. So you need professional guidance around that uh, if you're undergoing immunotherapy. That would also apply to astragalus, which is one of the great immune tonics and anti-cancer herbs of Chinese medicine. And um, there's a tradition in Chinese medicine of making medicinal soups. So you can actually put the medicinal mushrooms and astragalus into soup and make it a part of your food. And both the mushrooms and the astragalus don't have a strong taste. And so uh, it's a really nice thing to do to make your food medicine that way. Now, astragalus is one of the great immune tonics. It really it enhances immune response. It improves the response to chemotherapy, but also protects you from the toxic effects, especially well known for supporting the bone marrow, supporting the blood cells. Again, turns on apoptosis, this intelligence in the cell to self-destruct if it's not a healthy cell, this immune modulation. Now, this is really interesting about T cells are part of the army of your immune system and um, cancer will cause the, the immune system not to be able to see the cancer cell. And that's why it's hard to treat cancer because your immune system might be there, but the cancer cell knows how to hide from the immune system. So astragalus helps to take away that sort of, um, that cloak uh, of the cell and allows the immune system to see the cancer cell. And then the in inhibition again of angiogenesis, the inhibition of making blood supply to a tumor and thereby allowing metastasis and progression to happen. So have inhibition of that with, with uh, astragalus. So you can see that these three, cordyceps, astragalus, and ganoderma, have a multiplicity of functions that are very important to cancer patients. We also can make combinations of herbs. And there's another herb, salvia, Don Shen, that I'm going to talk about uh, as well momentarily, that we combine with astragalus for liver protection and also for inhibiting blood clots and preventing uh, increased blood clotting and, and coagulation. And I'll talk about salvia momentarily. The most famous use of astragalus is to increase your white blood cell counts. And uh, many, many cancer patients have low white blood cell counts as a part of their cancer, but uh, almost all chemotherapy will, will take a hit on your white blood cells, which are a part of the army of your immune system. So being able to restore that is very important. Lots of research on that. Now, if you only remember one anti-cancer herb today, this is one I want you to know. This is one of the most important herbs in Chinese cancer herbal medicine, Huangqin, Scutellaria bicolensis. It's in almost every anti-tumor formula. It has several phytochemicals, plant chemicals that have very potent anti-tumor activity, anti-inflammatory activity. And so uh, it's also uh, the scutellaria is uh, really good for the microbiome in the gut, which gets disrupted during cancer and cancer treatments. And there's wonderful protection to the liver. So this is one of the most important herbs. It again, turns on apoptosis. It's, it's an antioxidant. It sensitizes uh, and improves the effect of certain chemotherapy agents, especially when combined with curcumin, which comes from turmeric. Uh, it also inhibits metastasis, the proliferation and spread of cancer, and it also will induce cell cycle arrest. And what that means is it stops the cancer cell from actively dividing and, and growing. And there are new drugs called uh, CDK and CD six inhibitors, and those are cell cycle arrest drugs. They're part of new immunotherapy drugs. And so we already have in plant medicine, this impact to be able to inhibit cancer cells from dividing and growing. 
And we have this super anti-inflammatory effect also from, uh, from Scutellaria bicolensis. And so that's important. All cancers are, are inflammatory. So we want to use things that are anti-inflammatory. And then berberine is very rich in the Scutellaria bicolensis. And berberine is actually present in a lot of medicinal herbs. And for example, hydrastis canadensis, that's golden seal root. And there are a lot of herbs in both Chinese and Western herbal medicine that have berberine gives this bright yellow color. It makes it bitter. If you've ever tasted golden seal, it's really bitter. And you get this really potent anti-inflammatory effect. Berberine also is a little bit astringent to the gut. So it's good when you have diarrhea. And also uh, it helps to balance the microbiome. Certain plant chemicals will enhance the balance of the bacteria, the healthy and unhealthy bacteria. It'll decrease the unhealthy and promote the healthy bacteria in the gut. So again, when we think about plant chemicals and plant medicine, we're always thinking about multitasking. And that's the beauty of plants is that they can bind to many receptors and affect many functions. And that's why plant medicine is so powerful. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about before we go to Q&A is this risk of blood clots. And a lot of patients don't realize that as a cancer patient, you are at high risk for a blood clot. And so you want to do things that will decrease that risk. So by altering blood clotting factors, coagulation factors, we take you away from that edge of forming a blood clot. And there are two uh, herbs that are very, very good for this turmeric. Uh, and there are two forms of turmeric in Chinese medicine, yujin and jianghuang. And we most commonly use yujin form. They're just processed a little differently. And um, red sage root is one of my absolutely most favorite herbs in Chinese medicine, dan shen. And we'll talk about both of these uh, in the context of blood clotting, but they both have many more gifts. Now, this is what a blood clot looks like. This is a bunch of platelets, the blood clotting cells, and with this sticky fibrin protein all around them. And this will coat a cancer cell and hide it from the immune system. And that's one reason cancer is very hard to treat. This is one of the ways cancer hides from the immune system. The other way we just mentioned is that it makes the immune system confused and the immune system can't recognize the cancer cell. So it's important to understand that Almost half of all cancer patients are going to form a blood clot. A blood clot can lead to a stroke. We hope you enjoyed this short excerpt from the Health and Healing Club. This entire video, including an in-depth discussion and thoughtful and inspiring questions and answers, is available inside the Health and Healing Club, along with hundreds of hours of premium and exclusive life-changing content, practices, and holistic, natural, and integrative solutions for health and healing. You can start your free trial today at healthandhealingclub.com.